Number 87. Calculate the equilibrium concentration of Zn2 plus in a 0.30 molarity solution of zinc uh, cyanide ZnCn4 with a 2 minus charge. Okay. So in order to do this problem, I did go have I, you know, I did have to go back into the textbook to find out any K values that go along with this problem. And I did find that the um, equilibrium formation constant, the Kf, is 2.1 times 10 to the 19th for this complex ion. Now remember, complex ions are when you have a metal, which we have here, and a non-metal ligand, basically a polyatomic, and they're crunched together and they still come out to be an overall charge. That's a complex ion. Now, with any Kf uh, you know, value, we are always forming that complex ion, and we always form it from their parts. Now, they did tell us that we had one part here, the Zn2+, so we just have to find out what the other part is. But it's pretty simple, right? If we have Zn2+, plus, plus well, what's the component? Here's the zinc, and we're forming this complex ion, so the other component has to be the cyanide. Cn, right? So this comes together, double arrow, to produce that complex ion. Zn, Cn, 4, 2 minus. Now, what is the charge for cyanide? A couple of things. You can memorize it because it's a polyatomic, or you can, you know, backtrack to see what the charge would be. Cyanide is a negative 1 charge. We could just put a minus there. And since they all have charges, they all are going to be aqueous, which means that they will all be in the Kf expression. Now, they did state that we're starting off with 0.3 molarity of this complex ion. So if you're starting off with an amount, that's a initial amount. And any time that you have an initial amount when you're dealing with K values, you need the ice table. So we got to use the ice table. Let's get our thoughts together so that we can answer this problem. So I'm going to say ICE. Maybe I'll bring this down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now, initial for I, the only thing that they told us was we had 0 0.30 molarity of the complex ion. So I'm going straight over here, and I'm saying that my initial is 0 0.30. They did not state that we had any initial Zn2 plus or Cn minus. So I'm just going to say zero and zero. C stands for change. So that means that, you know, we're going to be plusing or minusing concentrations, depending on what we're starting with. We have nothing starting off, so you can only go up from there. So the, the reactant side has to be a plus, and the product side has to be a minus. But we don't know by how much this is changing, so we're just going to use our variables. And we just use our coefficients, right? Now that's a good thing, right? Always make sure that this is balanced. Maybe some of you might be screaming at your, you know, either your laptop or your cell phone or your desktop saying, Christina, there's four CNs. We need to put a four in front of here. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> so now we can progress. Use those coefficients. There was no coefficient in front of the ZN, so that means that this was like plus one X but plus one X is the same as just saying plus X. But here, now I have a four in front, so I do have to say plus four X. There was only one of the complex ion, so I'll just say minus X. And now your equilibrium is just bringing your initials and your changes together. So zero plus X is just X. Zero plus four X is four X. And 0 0.30 minus X is 0 0.30 minus X. And these are your values that are going to be going into your Kf expression. So let's just put this over to the side. And now let's write out our expression. Kf would equal the concentration of products divided by reactants. They're all aqueous, so they all get included. So it would be the Zn, Cn, 4, 2 minus, divided by the concentration of the two reactants. So we have the Zn2+, plus, and we have the Cn-. minus. Keep in mind that since the Cn has a 4 in front, I have to take that and raise it to the 4th. Okay. 
So let's see, KF, the number that we found in the back of the book, 2.1 times 10 to the 19th. This value is the 0 0.30 minus X. This zinc is X and this CN minus is 4X. Okay, now anytime that you see that you have something that looks like this, where you have a number minus X with, you know, equilibrium values, you're going to have to do the quadratic equation. We like to assume first, always assume first, and then see if, you know, your answer is valid. Since this value is so high, that means that at equilibrium, you have mostly products. But if you started with all products and you're ending with mostly products, the change, this drop is so small that you're not even going to notice it which means that probably this minus X is really negligible. That's the assumption. We could get rid of the minus X, we do the math, and then we just check to see if, you know, we did it correctly. So let's see, 2.1 times 10 to the 19th equals, looks like we have 0 0.30 divided by the two reactants, we have X, and then 4x raised to the fourth. Let's combat 4x to the fourth, right? 4x to the four, this exponent just means that you have four, four x's, and they're all being multiplied by each other. So always just multiply the, multiply the numbers first. So this is essentially four to the fourth. So four to the fourth is 256. And then you have four X's, so that would be X to the fourth. So I can just basically get rid of this and just simplify that by saying this is 256 X to the fourth. Now, if we pick up another four, I now have a total of five X's, right? So I can just get rid of this and say that now this is X to the fifth. And now let's do some cross multiplication, right? I'm going to take this value. Now we're just using our algebra to solve and times it by that value, right? So let's see, it's going to equal 0 0.30. And then whatever those two numbers are, 2.1 times 10 to the 19th times 256. I get 5.376 times 10 to the 21st. And that's x to the fifth. So get x by itself. You want to just divide by that, you know, that number 5.376 times 10 to the 21st. 5.376 times 10 to the 21st. That gets canceled. And now we're just left with x to the fifth equals 0.3 divided by that answer. I get a long decimal. So I'll try to keep as many numbers as I can. 5.580357. That's good enough. Times 10 to the negative 23rd. Now, since it is being raised to the fifth, what I would have to do is I would have to do the fifth root. However, on the calculator, I have no idea how to do this. So I always just raise my exponents to the inverse number. So if this is five over one, right, I could just raise it to the one over five and five times one over five it cancels out and you're just left with, with X. But if you do that on one side, you got to do that on the other side. So one over five. And then once I get that, I will get my X value, which I will put over here. So 5.580357 times 10 to the negative 23rd. I'm going to raise this to the one fifth. And now two sig figs, so 3.5. 3.5 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. Now, before I write that molarity value, I just want to make sure that this was assuming correct. Keep in mind that we got rid of that negative X, right? So we have to do the 5% rule. What that means is that you just take your X value and divide it by your initial, which was 0 0.3 times 100, because you're finding a percentage. If this is five or less, then we assumed correctly and we can keep that X value. 
it looks like we're pretty much in the clear here. Yeah, we're not even at 1%. So I'm just going to give that rule a check. And now I'm going to add the molarity on here. And now we're going to answer the question. Let's see. They wanted that equilibrium concentration of zinc. So the Zn2 plus, that was just X. So the concentration of the zinc 2 plus, since we just labeled it as X, that's the value, 3.5 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. And we are done. This problem is done. What do you think? Not bad. Let's just color, have a little fun, some happy blues. <laughs> anyway. Uh, thank you so much. I really hope this worked. I really hope this helping you out. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. And if you wouldn't mind, please press the subscribe button. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much. And let's keep working hard. Okay. Bye-bye.